Hey everyone, after wrapping up my character modeling series with the Hammer Boy, today we're going to look at hard surface modeling techniques with creating the Star Wars Mandalorian helmet. I've captured the entire process of modeling this helmet and I will explain my approach to how I created it. This video is a time lapse that includes me narrating throughout it. I have marked up places where I explain my process in the table of contents below where I narrate each part of the process. By watching this video, you will learn my high level approach to hard surface modeling techniques that include sub D or subdivision modeling, edge flow and topology, how to maintain clean topology, and how to model simple to complex objects in Maya. Keep in mind that I use Maya for this video, but the techniques can be applied to any 3D software. So with that, let's get started. All right, so a big part of what I did was find reference. So I looked out and found some nice reference on sideshow.com, which they make props for movies in, in Hollywood. So they had some nice front side and perspective shots. Now they didn't match up perfectly and there's some, you know, perspective distortion when you're using for orthographic. So I use these more of a, as a guide, but they're definitely the most accurate reference you'll find online. So use it to your best ability and you'll see that I'm matching up perspective shots uh, and I just used a 45 degree focal length and did my best to match it. After that I went ahead and created a 16 sided cylinder uh, to match up with a subdivided cube and the subdivided cube I subdivided it about three times and that gives me the 32 sides to match up with the 32 sided cylinder. So that gives me a nice cap for the um, the top of the head and then I have the cylinder for the bottom and that worked out really really well and once I got these attached I just used some snapping you can use D to move the pivot for the edges and move tool to snap I then used a lattice to make sure to help with the overall form and the lattice just helps me with large scale changes and I'm using the front the side the view and the perspective in order to get that of course make sure to work with symmetry uh, to help with efficiency so once you do that you know that'll that'll make your life a lot easier So once I spent the first part of the process just making sure that the form and everything was aligned and the proportions were all good, I now go ahead and start cutting in the detail. This is where edge flow and topology is very important. This is where you want to make sure to plan out your edge flow and get everything set up properly. And again, I'm bouncing between the front view, the side view, cutting in where I'm needed, where it's needed, and then I go ahead and harden edges. Now, some people might be watching this and say, well, why don't you just use crease uh, at this point? I just wanted to stick to a nice sub D workflow that you can use in any software, even though creasing is pretty much in any software. And if you wanted to take this and upload this or take this out of Maya uh, into game engines and whatnot. so. Uh, I will be again using sub D workflow and beveling and chamfering a lot of edges here. All right. So I also flatten the side of the head and I'm going in and preparing a lot of the area to uh, extrude and cut out. So that's kind of the main focus here, all while maintaining a nice clean distribution of edge flow and always checking my reference. So you'll see here that I'm going through and setting up 
and readjusting kind of the camera again just using it as a guide and I'm going back and making sure that everything looking good from the side the front and the perspective view it's not going to match hundred percent but again I'm using these more as a guide to help with modeling So here around the eye area, you'll see that I actually used kind of this kite quad um, to run some edges through and I ended up going back on that instead of running edges um, horizontally, I run it coming down uh, vertically, so running up and down. So you see I'm making room here uh, since I didn't like all the pinching that was happening uh, and a lot of times, you know. To get rid of pinching, you're going to just have to add more geometry, which is fine. And then I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup and uh, making sure that it subdivides and smooths uh, nicely. So you can see I'm again doing some cleanup. And I would definitely recommend using the insert edge loop tool uh, to insert with edge flow. That's what I used here with a little bit of cleanup. And that just helps me avoid all the hard uh, pinching and creasing within your model. Once I've shelled everything and gave it a nice extrusion, I go ahead now and I use a bevel with chamfer, all right, or chamfer, however you want to say it. And this makes sure that I maintain my original edge flow and add in those holding lines. So you can see I'm going back to the reference, making sure that I add those uh, subtle curvatures and, and detail and just keep that mesh clean. So you can see this is where I really step into the next portion of the modeling and do a lot of kind of precision cuts and holding lines to make sure that everything looks as good as it should. So always got to make sure to take a look at those corners and you can see how I do it. I didn't speed this up too much so you can follow along. Uh, you can always slow it down if need be. And here I'm adding some more edges to help with the curvature on the inset of the cheek area and doing some cleanup, moving uh, some edges. And you can see that after I did that bevel and chamfer, I had to add edges to kind of run across the mesh, um, run across the model. And I'm using insert edge loop tool to help with that. All right. And it starts to pinch and there's a little bit of... Uh, you know some some messy vertices so that's why i use average vertices uh that really helps clean up that uh, that bumpy area so that really did a good job and i kind of scaled it down and i'm starting to add and refine those forms all right so i'm pretty happy once i get to this point and i want to move on to the next part so what i do is just kind of separate the inside from the outside of the helmet and i go ahead now and i start to add in that uh extrusion that runs essentially on the forehead horizontally around the model pretty straightforward i go in and do an extrusion with an offset and then once i offset it i do an extrusion to go inwards now where that extrusion ends it's not the cleanest area but i what i did was just leverage those modular pieces to hide that uh, messy topology so if nobody can see it then in, in my book that's fine and i'll make sure that it is cleaned up and unwraps properly so now i'm working on the the modular pieces so here i just use the same techniques i start with a simple form and i start to add edges and, and start to build up and add that detail. I always start with a six sided cube if I can. I give it thickness, refine detail, and add those holding lines, all right? Now, even though I'm not on the origin, I can use mirror here with just object uh, Z. 
all right so you can see this is not the most complicated shape it's probably the second most uh complicated in here and i go ahead and just refine the form and then i'll start adding in some holding lines This part is very important because watch how I take care of these corners, okay? So you can see that I have corners in the round and I, instead of running these edges all the way down the mesh, I just go ahead and split that one edge, that one face, and then I can remove the other edges. So hopefully that was pretty clear. I can probably do a separate tutorial on how to do corners, hard surface corners uh, in Maya, or just with sub, sub D workflow techniques, all right? All right, so now we're off to this second part here, uh, the modular piece that kind of runs, maybe a sensor of some sort or where the antennas go. And boy, this one, this one was fun. It didn't look all that complicated at first, but there's a lot of intricate detail. Uh, I initially modeled this with a 16 sided cylinder and it just caused a, a lot more issues than what it was worth. So instead I used a 32 sided cylinder, um, to you know give me a lot of geometry while maintaining you know nice clean form all right so i use object symmetry again uh even though i'm using a higher subdivided model uh high subdivision model i'm still able to you know keep and apply the techniques where i refine the form i block it out add the detail give it thickness and then give it holding lines so there's a lot of cutting, multi-cut, there's a lot of beveling and chamfering and extruding. So even though this was really intricate, it was definitely a fun piece to model to try to, you know, keep as clean as possible. So you'll kind of see me going back and forth and trying different things. I wanted to keep all of that in this tutorial because, you know, as, as good as everyone is, you know, we're all not gurus that, that say this is exactly how to model each piece. Sometimes you got to try a couple techniques um, and hopefully this was pretty clear on, on how I did that. And I would say it's pretty close to what the actual model looks like. It may be, uh, there may be some things that um, I didn't include, but you can see a lot of that is just from the perspective distortion and the way that it's rotated. Uh, I end up moving and setting up uh, positioning it later uh, with the lattice and rotate to kind of give it that uh, more proper look. But that was the gist of how I did this. Uh, so you can take a look and see how I finish it up.
right, so now we're on the top of the head piece here. You can see that I'm using multi-cut. Now, if you you go off the model, hold shift and drag, you can cut uh, that. So I use that to cut that nice straight piece on the model. And then I go ahead and um, detach it, extrude it, or duplicate mesh. In this case, I duplicated the mesh, then deleted what I didn't need. And then I go ahead and just kind of uh, do some cleanup. But really, this was a really simplified piece. Um, really everything after this is really easy, especially after doing that really complicated piece. So I just make sure that I have my edges, that I'm then gonna bevel and then move some things on the normal and use transform component. Um, but again, yeah, you can kind of see how I do that with, the sim with simple extrusions, multi-cuts and beveling here. Okay, so now we're taking a look at that rear panel piece. So this one again was pretty straightforward uh, piece with just some basic holding lines, basic extrusions, and then it kind of has these fans or vents, I should say, running down the back. And thankfully I had some good reference to work from, uh, from the Sideshow website. So I was able to kind of move uh, and position that. And really this compared to everything else was fairly straightforward with a nice simple piece. So I go ahead and take care of this one pretty quickly. Um, and then you'll see how I then do those separate pieces, which was another fu fun piece to model with the uh, with the vents where they were, you know, hard surface, organic at the same time. And then I duplicate, move, duplicate and move. So just make sure to model one piece, save some time and then um, move it in position. And I made sure not to attach it to this vent piece because you can clearly see that, you know, they're separate, you know, you're going to model it like you would in real life. Um, maybe they're welded um, or maybe they're made to be modular and replaced. So um, yeah, that worked out really well. All right, and on to the last part here, which is the essentially the glass um, part. I go ahead and just work off my existing topology. I go ahead and duplicate it, and then I extrude those edges down, and then I just cut in only the areas that I need, and I do some uh, extra extrusions and moving on the normal uh, for, um, for this piece. Once I do that, I make sure to match it to my reference and then I make sure to give it some uh, some thickness, add in those holding lines and take care of those corners. So that was kind of the gist for this piece.
right, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is a little bit of a new format where I'm combining kind of voiceover narration with time lapse. So if you enjoyed it, please let me know down below. Uh, and of course, if you if you have any tips or recommendations, throw those down um, and we can kind of get a dialogue going. So again, uh, like, comment, subscribe if you found this helpful. As always, take care, everyone, and stay safe.